Hi-ya! Come on, guys, let me hear you. Hi-ya! 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 Whip it out there, Chad. Hi-ya! 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 One more for good luck. Hi-ya! Hi-ya! One more for our line. Hi-ya! Hi-ya! Jump! Bow out. Drop rest. All right, not bad. Hi, welcome to our show, Karate and You. I'm your host, Master Art Fines. Before we begin today's program, I'd like to explain a little bit about our show. As you know, Karate New wasn't designed specifically just to promote United States Black Cat Kempo Karate, but to promote all styles of martial arts, so we all unite in a common cause to help improve our country and help make it a happier, healthier, safer place in which to live. Today's show, we're going to be working on some fundamental punching techniques. This way, we can make sure that we kind of nip any bad habits that you may have in the bud. And we're also going to be working on basic protocol. So without any further ado, turn on your VCR, and we'll be right back. Hi-ya! Hi, welcome back to Karate and You. Before we begin, I think it's only appropriate that I introduce my assistants and students and friends to you. This handsome devil to my right is Mr. Michael Joyce, and Michael happens to be 15 years old. Mike, you want to like look that way and take a little bow and say hello? There you go. You, you're not nervous, are you, Mike? Yes, sir. You are? Okay. Well, just relax, have a good time. This show's a lot of fun, a lot of fun. And this debonair fella to my left is Mr. Chad Gullib, and Chad happens to be 13 years old. Why don't you take a bow there, Chad? And show him pearly whites. Come on. That big, handsome smile. There you go. Okay. I want you guys to relax on today's show. Can you do that? Yes, sir. I don't hear you. Yes, sir. How about you, Mike? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Okay. Just loosen up right now. So I think we better do a little warm up right now. We're going to do a little loosen up, get these guys rolling, get the blood flowing, get the juices going. So let's get in a chuck position right now, guys. Get your hands out in front and just kind of shake out your arms a little bit. Now, both of these fellows are white belts in our school. They haven't had a whole heck of a lot of experience up in front of a group of people, so I guess you can imagine what they must be going through right now. Just think about it this way, guys. Everybody at home right now, if it's 9 o'clock, they're probably sitting around the living room in their pajamas eating potato chips watching you. So relax, okay? There we go. Shake out those hands. Very good. Okay, hands on your hips. Rock your head from side to side. Just try and touch your earlobes to your shoulder, guys. That's it. You can move a little faster than that there, Mike. You look like you're defrosting over there. Okay. Back and forth. Very good. Okay. And let's twist our heads from side to side. Twist your head from side to side. Pretend you're watching a fast basketball game here. Very good. Tennis match is more like it, I guess, huh? Very good. Okay. Up and down. Stay nice and loose. Very good. Rotate the shoulders real quick in a big circle. Right now, all we're doing, you people at home, is just basically getting a little blood flowing throughout the body, particularly to the joint areas. We're not doing any extensive warm-ups or anything. Anytime we do any real serious martial arts training, we want to spend about 15 minutes of warm-ups minimum before we get into anything rigorous. But right now, I think both of these guys here, I'm going to just kind of loosen them up a little bit, let them relax a little. Very good. Now, let's do the I don't know routine, you know, up and down. You know, a lot of times when you're younger, you spill the milk in the kitchen. Mom says, who spilled the milk? And Chad says... I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Good. Up and down, up and down. Very good. Okay. Stay nice and loose now, guys. I want you to keep your feet firmly on the floor, and I want you to twist your torso from side to side. We're going to twist to the right all the way around as far as we can go, and look over your right shoulder, fellas. Ready? Twist to the right as far as you can go, and back the other direction. Good. Twist, 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 twist. Twist that body. Twist that neck. There you go. Way over here. Way over here. Mike, here I am. Come back over here. There we go. See my hand? See my hand? There you go. Twist the other direction. See the hand? Look at the hand. Look at the hand. Twist that body. Can you put a little more emphasis there? Oh, yes. Man, I heard all kinds of noise in that body. What's the matter? You're not that old, are you? All right. Twist that thing. Very good. Hey, nice profile. And back the other direction. Quick. Very good. Okay. Stay nice and loose. Now what I want you to do is this. Face straight ahead. Hands on your hips. And I want you to tilt your bodies over to the left, and that's in that direction, fellas. Just kind of tilt over a little bit. Stretch out the side of your body. That's it. Stretch, 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 stretch. Good, okay, don't fall asleep over there, Chad. All right, over to the right side. That's it, good, looking good. Over to the left. Very nice. Over to the right. Very good, okay, straight up. Now I want you to keep your legs straight and just go down as far as you can without hurting yourself. Go ahead, straight down. No, no, keep your legs spread apart. What are you guys doing? Put your hands on your hips. What, are you taking over my show here, Chad? Huh? Okay, stay nice and straight so you feel a nice stretch in the back of your leg right through here. Don't overdo it, though. Okay, back up. Inhale through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. 
Very good. Into the nose, out to the mouth. Let's go drop down again. Keep your hands on your hips. Go ahead, guys. Like you just dropped the you know, eye contact down there. There it is. Must be down here somewhere, huh? That's it. Back up. Inhale. Exhale. Very good. Okay, now it comes my favorite exercise of all, okay? Learn this from Elvis Presley. Bend your knees a little bit, hands on your hips. Rotate your hips in big circles. Go. We got any music back there? Oh, no music. You didn't bring any music today, Chad. Other direction. Go. Throw that thing in reverse. That's a hunk of, hunk of burning love here, guys. Keep those hips going. Come on, Chad. Move, will you? Oh, gone it. Got to teach you to dance. Get those hips going. Other direction. Very good. Okay, and stop. Feet together. Hands on your knees. Drop your rear end. Rotate your knees a big circle to the right. That's it. Any type of exercise you do, you always want to make sure that you do it strict and correctly. This way you keep from sustaining any injury. Any type of physical activity you do, marble playing, dart shooting, anything you do, make sure you do some type of warm-up because your body is the only one you got. And it's got to be with you for the rest of your life, so you've got to make sure you take good care of it. Other direction. Man, I'm getting dizzy over here watching you, Chad. Come on, Mike, move. Take off the emergency brake here, will you? Very good. Okay, in and out. Very good. Okay, spread your legs. Now I want you to get up as high as you can on the toes, and I want you to try and touch the ceiling, all right? Nice and high up on your toes, and get up there, way up there. Now, I want you to kind of just rock back and forth a little bit. Come on, guys, move, 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 move. Look like we're petrified. Get up on the balls of the feet. Good, back down. Dance around like a marionette, puppet on a string. Dance around. Come on, loosen it up, loosen up, loosen it up. Very good. Loose, 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 loose. And stop. Chop. Chop. Okay, how about you shift over to my left, uh, to my right a little bit there, Hansel. Okay, I want you guys to take a couple deep breaths. In your martial arts training, it's real important that you understand the mechanics of breathing. Breathing should be controlled by you. You shouldn't let breathing control yourself. In other words, if you're out of breath, you shouldn't be gasping for air and let your body go out of control. You use your mind, and you control your breathing. Push. Push. I don't hear you. Push. All right, when we breathe, we want to inhale through our nose. We take it down past our lungs into our stomach area, our diaphragm area, and expand. We exhale. We let the air out. It comes out through our mouth. So right now, get your hands out in front of you guys. We're going to take a nice deep breath, pull the hands back in our chambers, inhale through our nose. Nice deep breath, inhale. Exhale. Excellent. Very good. In. Control it going out. Exhale. Man, you guys look like you were born doing this. I bet you were, huh? Out. One more time. In. And push it out. Very good and relax. Okay, you feeling better now, Chad? Yes, sir. How about you, Mike? Yes, sir. All right, you sure about that? Yes, sir. Okay, you had to think about it, Chad. You know where you are, right? Yes, sir. Okay, then we're all right. We're all right. Okay, first thing I want you to do is chi up, chi up. Good, chi up is attention. Chi up is the most important martial arts technique because what it does is it shows your instructor how focused you are, how attentive you are, and whether or not you got what it takes to really indulge in the martial arts. Make it part of your life, okay? First thing we have to acquire in the martial arts training is our attitude. And this is displayed by our chi up position. Attitude first, skill second, like anything else in life. Okay, now, I want to see you get into a chuck position. Chuck position means rest. Chuck. Very good. Chuck. Feet together. Eyeball straight ahead. If a bumblebee lands on your nose, you don't move. If your pants fall down, I hope you got clean underwear on. Chuck. All right, next position that we're going to get in, or posture as we call it, is called a jumbi, and a jumbi is a ready position. Jumbi, up. Okay, not bad. Chip. It's like soggy cereal, though, guys. We're going to get into it. We're going to pop into it. All right, let's move you over a little bit to my right there, Chad. Now, watch me from here. When I do a jumbi, my left hand becomes a chop. My right hand is going to be a fist. My left leg comes up, steps off to the left, and I thrust my hands down in front of me, just like so. Eye contact straight ahead. Knees are bent. Hips and shoulders are square, body is symmetrical. When I come back into a chi up position, it's the left side attacks the right side. Boom! Chalk, I step again to the left. Chi up, bang. Jumbi. Eye contact straight ahead. Push. Push. I don't hear you guys. Push. Okay, that's better. Let's see. Let's get a jumbi going here. Hey Not bad. Chi up! Chalk! 
to me. Hi -oh! All right. Very good. Stay right there. Now, your hands should be 8 to 11 inches off your knees there, Chad, just like that. Your eye contact is good. Stick your chest out there. You've got a big ox chest. Get it out there. Show it off a little bit, okay? And you want to stay in this position. It's a nice, comfortable position. The knees are bent for a reason. The reason the knees are bent is if your legs are straight. Straighten out your legs, Mike. And you've got a kick or a shot to the leg. There's no play in the knee. Chances are you're going to sustain a serious injury. The knees are bent. You're in a nice, comfortable position. There's a lot of give in your leg. There's less chance of getting injured. And your eye contact is straight ahead. Now, your secret weapon, okay, your secret weapon is actually your forehead. In other words, when you're in jewelry position, you don't want your chin up in the air like this, okay, because if he gets hit in the face, first thing he's going to get hit is the jaw or the nose, and we all know what's going to happen at that point. So what Mike's going to do here is going to drop his head a little bit so that this forehead is the closest facial body part towards a particular object. So if somebody hits him, they're going to hit him in the forehead first as opposed to the chin or the nose unless they're coming up from underneath. All right, this way, if anybody does hit them in the head, it may hurt a little bit, but chances are that hand's going to hurt a heck of a lot more. Don't you agree, Chad? Yes, sir. Okay, chill. Chalk rest. Very good. All right, now, one of the things we're going to show you today, we're going to show you how to throw a proper reverse punch. And a reverse punch is a very, very powerful punch for a martial artist. And there's various different uh, philosophies as to how to throw one. The one we're throwing is one that was taught to me when I was 13 years old, when I first started my training. And it's called a reverse punch. And the punch that I'm showing you is by Korean descent. All right. Now, when we throw a punch, first of all, we have to understand how to make a fist. So I want everybody to spread their fingers real wide. Spread them as wide as you can. And what we're going to do here is we're going to roll our fingers into our palms, except for our thumbs. Go ahead, fellas. That's it. Now we lay our thumbs right across the index finger and the middle finger. And I want you to squeeze your hands as tight as you can. Squeeze them until they start to vibrate. Squeeze them. Come on, Mike. Come on, Chad. Squeeze those things, will you? Very good. Okay, now open them up slowly and shake them out a little bit. Now, at that point where you have your hands as tight as they can possibly be, when you're squeezing them as tight as they can possibly be, that's called point of impact. In other words, real quickly, Chad, just turn towards me for a second. Get your hands up like you're fighting me, Chad. You're a scary guy. Whoa, okay. Now, if I throw a punch out here at Chad, my hand isn't flexed right now because what's going to happen, my arms will fatigue, my muscles get tired, they'll drop. But my hands are nice and loose all the time from here. As my hand goes out, upon impact, you're not blocking. Quit showing off, Chad. Quit showing off. Okay. As I'm going out to throw the punch, upon impact, right before impact, that's when my hand is clenched as tight as it can possibly be. The point of impact. After impact, then my hand relaxes. This way I don't fatigue myself, and I'm also a lot quicker. My reactions are a lot quicker, and I can move more elusively. Now, if I throw a reverse punch, just drop that hand there for one second, because I don't know, you might, you might be trigger happy there. That thing come up and pop me in the nose. All right, if I throw my right hand at him, and... Upon impact, I have to make sure that I hit with the proper striking surface. And the proper striking surface, if I can get a close-up here, is the index finger knuckle and the middle finger knuckle, okay? Index finger right here and the middle finger right there. There we go. Hey, we got one there. Beautiful. You see a lot of martial arts, uh, you know, logos and things. You see a reverse punch like this, and they always have these two knuckles are always really predominant there, very dominant. And the index finger knuckle, there's 70% pressure there's 30% pressure on the middle finger knuckle. All right, if you get a little profile shot there, and let's give it this way, you get a really, oh, look at that, what happened there? Must be gonna have a baby, I don't know what's that. Okay, now from here, I throw my right hand and I fire this gun right up there to his forehead or his eyebrow just now. All right, when I throw that punch, the index finger knuckle makes the initial contact, the middle finger knuckle is secondary. So only these two knuckles make contact on a reverse punch. Not my fingers, not my ring finger, not my pinky. Okay, only those two knuckles right there. So I throw my punch, bang, that's all I'm hitting with. It's real important that you understand how these striking surfaces work because in the martial arts, all right, the physiology here, okay, is that when I punch the target, okay, and I make contact at the target, my hand starts to reverse itself as well. This is called a reverse punch. So when I hit the flesh, I'm not just hitting, I'm twisting as well. Let me, let me use your cheek here. We're twisting twisting into the flesh. That's why we're reversing it. That's why it's called a reverse punch. It twists right up in there and reverses itself palm down. Now, less surface area on target means more penetration. That's why we only hit with these two particular knuckles. That means if, so let's say for an example, I used the whole palm of my hand and gave him a smack to the face, bang, it might kind of shake him up a little bit, right? Cause a little swelling on his face, but it might just make him angry. 
And then somebody who is angry, boy, they're hard to deal with. So if I'm going to hit him, I don't want to make him angry. I want to make him frightened. I want to shake him up. I want to rattle his cage. So the less surface area, the more penetration. That means if I only cover maybe two by two inches, that means when I hit him, I'm going to really do some damage as opposed to just a smack to the face. And so, push. Push. All right, thank you, sir. Chip. Oh, we'll s All right, so right now what we're going to do is we're going to practice. How are you doing over here, Mike? Good, sir. Okay, we're going to practice our reverse punches. So right now, guys, I want your hands out in front of you like so. And I want you to pull your fingers in. Lay your thumbs across your index finger, middle finger. There you go. And pull them both back into the chambers just like so. Now, in our martial arts, I should say in our particular style, Okay, I shouldn't say martial arts, it should be a little more specific. Hands back in the chamber. The rib cages here are called our chambers. That's the chamber. That's where the hand starts from. That's his place of origin. On a basic punch. Okay, we wouldn't naturally, we wouldn't stand out there and fight like this. Okay, guys, let's go. I'm ready for you. That's right. Hey, I got to tell you, I'm a black belt and I'm ready. All right, that doesn't make much sense. All right, that's ridiculous. But this punch right now is in its basic form. So what we're doing is we're teaching you the fundamentals of throwing a proper punch. What you're seeing now is not proper execution if you were in an altercation, but proper execution to practice the basic fundamentals in order to develop a foundation to build on. All right, now, these are called our chambers. Now, Mike is going to throw a slow motion left hand out, and as Mike throws his hand, you're going to notice that his hand reverses itself. Go ahead, Mike. Three-quarters of the way out, and that three-quarters of the way out right here is where he would be making contact. The last quarter would be follow through. All right. In other words, he makes contact here and then he follows through out to there. Now, a couple of things we've got to make point of here. First of all, is we're going to make sure his fist is tight and he's cocking his wrist a little bit just so he hits with that knuckle first. He doesn't want to have his knuckles up in the air like so. They want to be down just slightly. Now, we get down to the arm here. If I can get an elbow shot. Man, what an elbow you got there, pal. Been working on that for a long time, huh? Can you do arm curls with that or extensions? Okay. Now, from here, we've got an elbow. And the elbow is what we call a hinge joint. It only moves one way. If it goes out too far, it locks, it hyperextends itself. When we have a hyperextension, what happens is the joint bone, the bone goes against the joint, and you wind up with a swelling. It looks like a gazaba melon here, and he's going to have a serious injury. So we want a slight little bend in the elbow, just a little bend, so he doesn't hyperextend. Now, this arm works just like a shock absorber on a car. When you hit an object, there's impact going out, but there's also concussion coming back into the arm. So this arm's got to have a little resilience, just a little bit, not much, just a little bit. And this will keep him from sustaining any injury in his wrist, his elbow, and his shoulder joint. You understand that, Mike? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Thanks for the use of the arm. Okay, pull the hands back in the chambers. Now, we're going to throw a couple reverse punches, and I'm going to be a little more specific as to where the target areas are going to go. On my command, can you pull those hands back a little bit further, Chad? That's it. On my command, we're going to throw a right-handed reverse punch. We don't need to key out right now, fellas, okay? All I want to see is that you're using proper execution. Ready? Hip. Good. Left hand. Hip. Nice. Now, as you notice, as the right hand came back, the left hand went out. So they're kind of passing each other. Ship's passing in the night, so to speak. Hip. Good. Hip. Hip. Good. Now, you want to stay in a little more of a wider position there, a more comfortable position. And the reason we're in this position, like I said, it's just so that we're not pulling the cart before the horse. What we're teaching right now is basically how to throw a proper punch. So we have to stay there. We're going to be there for a relatively lengthy period of time. We have to get comfortable. Left hand. Hip. 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 Very good. Okay, just drop your hand, shake them out. All right, now, you people at home understand basically what the striking surface is, how to throw a proper punch, how to align the arm in, and how to make sure that you're not going to sustain any injury. So you take a safety precaution here with that elbow, a slight bend. Now, we have to figure out what are we going to be hitting here. So when you're practicing uh, by yourself, you use your own body as a target guide. So in other words, uh, Chad here looks like he might be about five foot six. We, we visualize a five, six, uh, five foot six person in front of you. See him, Chad? Yes, sir. You see him? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. You see him, Mike? Yes, sir. He's right there. Looks something like you. All right. You have to visualize or use your imagination, and you have an imaginary target there or a person in front of you. Now, where Michael's lip is, his upper lip, that's where his partner's upper lip is. So this time, Mike, when you throw your right hand in reverse punch, I want you to get ready to throw a right hand in reverse punch. He's going to throw it at the upper lip of his imaginary partner. Yep. Good. So that's number one target. Now, his solar plexus right here, where his ribs come in into an upside-down V, is approximately about this high, and that's about 
right about there. That's about where his solar plexus is for that imaginary partner. Yep. Good. Now we have two striking areas or two targets. The third target is going to be what we call the groin area. And that's the area that runs from hip bone to hip bone, right across the bladder area, the pubic line. And that's about right here. So throw that right hand there. Hip. Very good. Now, he's also striking with the proper striking surface, index finger, middle finger knuckle. So you're looking pretty darn sharp there, Mike. Stick out your chest, though. Stick out your chest. Yeah, we don't want to get a hunch back there. All right, now I want to see a left-handed reverse punch to the groin. Hip. Midsection. Hip. Upper lip. Hip. Very good. Drop your hand, shake it out. All right, nice work. Okay, so there you have target areas. You have striking surfaces and where to put the striking surface at what particular target. Now, when we're throwing a punch at this imaginary partner out there, guys, you have to punch to the center of the body. You people at home, the center of the body is not here. The center of the body is in between the eyes all the way down between the legs. That's the center. And we have three specific target areas, the upper lip, the solar plexus, and the groin area right here. So right now what we're going to do, fellas, we're going to practice throwing to these particular areas of the body. Pull your hands back in the chambers if you would. And I'd like you to do a right-handed reverse punch to the groin. To the groin. Ready? Up! Midsection. Hip! All right, that's a, that's a tall guy there. That's like, you know, big guy. There he is. See, there's your solar plexus. That's it. Same thing here. Drop him a little bit. Upper lip. Up! Very nice. Again, a tall guy. That's my, like my upper lip. There you go, Chad. Got to get your scope out there, you know? Hip! Upper lip. Stay on the target unless I indicate otherwise. Hip! Very good. Midsection. Hip. 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 Very nice. Groin. Hip. 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 Very good. Now stay right there. Now, if you people are observing, you notice one thing. They are looking at the target. That's a no-no. You fellas don't have to look where you're punching. Your vision gives you a big scope. Okay? What you do is look straight ahead. Don't look at the man's face. Don't look at the man's feet. Look straight ahead. When you're looking at a target, look at the chest. Because by looking at the chest, I see the face. I see the feet. I see the hands. Push. Push. All right, here we go. Upper lip. Hip. 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 Groin. Hip. 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 All right, jump. Bow out. Chalk. Rest. Man, you guys looking good. Very nice, Mike. All right. Now, next thing we're going to be working on is we're going to be working on a little coordination. All right. One of the things that martial arts develops is your motor skills, your coordination, your dexterity enhances these things and also gives you a good solid foundation to excel in other sports activities. Myself, I wrestled in high school and college. I also played soccer. And I can't tell you how valuable my martial arts training was as far as giving me a good foundation to develop my skills, my hand-eye coordination. Now, the next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be working on reverse punches. We don't have much time, but we're going to just do a combination of two punches. All right, guys, pull your right hand back in the chamber. And what we're going to do is two punches to the midsection. Hip. Good. Two to the upper lip. Hip. Groin. Hip. Midsection. Hip. Upper lip. Hip. All right, now here comes a trick for you guys. Two to the upper lip, two to the midsection, two to the groin. A total of six punches. Push. Push. One command. Ready? Hip. Very nice. Okay, that's about all the time we have. We now have to break to our match of the week, so sit back, enjoy yourself, have some fun. This week's match of the week for the right of your screen is Mr. Danny Rosen, who's 12 years old, and his opponent is Mr. Russell Moriarty, who's 11 years old. Russell the purple belt, Danny a brown belt. Both men. Excellent academic students. Last year, Danny was our student of the year. Nice front kick into a hook kick on Russell's part. Let's go, guys. Just smash him. In the center. Let's work the center over here. Let's work the center. Work the center. Let's hands up. Let's hands up. Good counter punch by Dan. In the center, in the center. Take him, take him down. Oh, you had him. Attempt to take down there. Nice attempt for a 360 by Russell Moriarty. Let's see more than one technique. 
Oh, nice spinning axe kick Quick by questions. Danny. Seconds left. Ten seconds. Go. Jump. Okay, back up. Okay, jump. Third down, six to go. <laughs> All right. Nice fight, guys. Good. That's what you call camaraderie, and that's one of the things that we really enforce in our martial arts training is no matter what you're doing out there, you always got to extend a hand and show good sportsmanship. We'll be right back after this message. Welcome to another conclusion of Karate and You. Before we close, however, I'd just like to say hello to one of my students who recently was uh, hit by a car, struck by a car, and is making a tremendous uh, recovery. I'd just like to say to Bill Winterbottom, Hope you're listening out there, everybody from the Art Bynes Karate Institute in Howe Township and all the people that know you and love you, wish you a happy and speedy recovery. We look forward to getting you back on the karate floor as well. At this time, Mike, anybody you want to say hello to? Yes, sir. I want to say hello to my mom, my dad, and my sister, Janine. Okay. Mom, dad, sister, Janine. And how about you there, Chad? Yes, sir. I want to say hello to my mom and my sister, Charlotte. Okay, great. It's a pleasure having you guys on the show. You get used to that high five, don't you? It's a pleasure having you on the show, and we'll probably get you on another time. Okay? We got what we got to work on you is I think we got to loosen you up a little bit. You know what I mean? Next time on the show, you get a couple of those, you know, those pies, you know, and throw them in your face a little bit there, Mike. Okay? Uh, one thing I just want to close on is the word safety in the martial arts, particularly. Safety is number one priority, and being the warm weather that we have right now and all the activities going on. Uh, accidents are inevitable and one of the things you have to do is be very very safety conscious okay very safety conscious particularly with your outside sports and activities going on right now uh, this is master art binds thank you for inviting us into your home remember that the biggest obstacle in life is yourself overcome it you can achieve the greatest accomplishment of all this can only be achieved however through a balanced education that pertains to knowledge of the mind honesty in the heart and strengthen the body. Thank you. Have a happy, healthy, safe week. If you'd like to be a guest on our show you can do so incidentally by writing Art Binds, Karate and You, Care of Mammoth Cablevision, P.O. Box 58, Belmar, New Jersey, 07719, or look us up in your local directory. If you'd like to be a guest on our show, you have some questions, or you'd like to come down for a karate class, come on down. The weather's fine. Have a nice week. Okay, guys. Chip. Jumbi. Hi up. Right hand reverse punch. Ready? Hi up. Hi up. Hi up. Nice loud key ass. Hi up. Hi up. Upper lip. Hi up. Hi up. Very good. Give me your left hand. Very nice. Hi up. Hi up. Hi up. Hi up. Upper lip. Good one. Last one. Big key out. Hi up. Hi up. Hi up. Hi up. Hi up. Hi up. Hi up.